Hi, this is Mike Schwartz. I'm the CEO of Glue, and today I'm going to record a quick demo of how to configure a SAML website for a single sign-on with your Glue server identity provider. So, as you can see from this diagram, the Glue server has a number of components for open source um, single sign-on. Um, one of them is the Shibboleth identity provider, and with that uh, component, you can make single sign-on with websites that support SAML, like Google or Salesforce, or some other website, Apache or IIS server, where you've installed the Shibboleth um, SP Apache filter. So in order to do this, um, the, the Glue server needs to know a little bit about the website. Um, now in, in Shibboleth, you have to configure XML, um, you have to configure the relying party.xml, the um, attribute filter.xml, and, and some other files, and that's not really good for humans. So in the um, Glue server, we built an administrative interface to manage trust with websites. So if you go to SAML, trust relationships, um, it brings up a, um, a view that will show you the websites with which you've currently configured single sign-on and what attributes you're releasing. But let's say we have a new website, so we'll click on this add relationship. And um, the form presents us, um, allows us to enter some information. Um, now, first of all, for SSO, we need to be able to identify the website. So the way that this is done is that the website's gonna send us their, what's called metadata. This is an XML file that normally contains a certificate uh, must contain the URL where this website's located so, so our IDP can send back a response. And um, so the question is, how are we gonna get this metadata into our Glue server? Um, luckily, the Glue server supports a couple of workflows. The easiest or maybe the most obvious um, workflow is that the partner website sends you a file or perhaps allows you to download a file and you can you know, choose that file um, right here. Um, another option is um, URI. Now the um, metadata for an IDP is not really that confidential. It contains the public um, certificate and the public URLs where the, where the website provides the, um, the URLs. Um, the Shibboleth IDP um, also, um, also publishes um, metadata via URL. So for example, if we go to the Glue IDP, um, we can see, you know, here's the XML, here's the certificate, um, here are the URLs, you know, where we provide um, the various um, endpoints, for example. Um, there's there's the, um, the SAML HTTP post simple sign, on, simple sign URL. So, um, so that's a pretty good way to do it. The advantage of this is that if the website updates this certificate, um, Shibboleth will automatically pick it up and there's no need for you to do anything. Um, another use case that we support is called generate. And in this use case, we uh, pre-generate the configuration on the IDP and then send the website a zip file. And that zip file contains a PDF with instructions on how to install the Shibboleth SP for Windows and and or IAS um, uh, or Linux Apache. Um, so it's like a quick start for a website who says, I want to connect to your SSO. What do I do? Well, you can generate the configuration, release your attributes. Um, actually, that zip file also contains the IDP metadata and a Shibboleth 2 XML file for, for the website to install. The only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't generate the private key and public certificate for the website. That has to be done by the website. So if they follow the instructions, what they'll do is return a public certificate to you after you send them these instructions. Um, the other mechanism is um, called federation. So if you've trusted a federation like in common, this federation already publishes a list of the websites and their, and their metadata. So you can simply just select the metadata um, from the list. Here's a site at UW. We'll say 
um, we'll give it a name, UW um, Catalyst um, Test is a description. And I'll release some attributes here. I'll, I'll release username and how about first name and last name and display name. So I release some attributes to this website. I hit add. And now the glue server is generating the right XML file. Um, if you're using our build operate service, it also checks in um, this um, to subversion. Or if you're using open source, you can configure your own subversion URL here if you want to get a, a you know, revision control of the, um, of the XML that gets generated. But that's really it. It's that simple. So now um, we have SSO with this website. Um, Shibboleth has um, a number of options. And so once you add the relationship, you can go into the detail and, and click some more of the options um, if you need to do that. Um, so the glue server has a, has a pretty good um, coverage of the Shibboleth functions. Um, if there's something in the Shibboleth, that the Shibboleth IDP does that we don't support in the glue server, then you can always create what's called a custom template. Um, there's part of the XML that you shouldn't touch, and there's part that you, that you can modify. And so, um, so if there's something that we haven't exposed a GUI element for, you can modify the, um, the custom template and, and go from there. So um, hope that was helpful. Um, if you want more information, visit our website, um, www.glu.org. Thanks.